Next up, we have Best Multiplayer Game. Previous winners in this category, 2015 Rocket League, 2016 Joint Winners Jackbox Party Pack 3 and Overwatch, 2017 Splatoon 2, 2018 Gang Beasts, 2019 we did not have the award, we're back again, probably for the last time because I think it's been consistently the most... Uh, lackluster in terms of nominations categories we've done we're all kind of single player fans here on the cast so this may well be reworked in 2021 watch this space our nominees this year call of duty warzone super mario 35 animal crossing new horizons fall guys and population one and now to the wheel of fate to determine who will go first shit just got a wheel <laughs> That's exactly the level of mirth that pun deserved, Barry. Thank you. <laughs> and it's me. Ooh. Great stuff in the category I care about the least. Um, right. Uh, I'm just going to go here because I think this was. I, I feel like this doesn't stand a chance of winning this category compared to some of the other stuff here, especially. Given what we said about it in another category, uh, I'm gonna go with Super Mario 35. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah. Who nominated it? Who wants to kind of mention it in ter in the kind of multiplayer context before we get rid of it? I mean, I think I might have mentioned it or nominated it. I mean, I had some a uh, time with it, and I had some enjoyment with it, but a lot of the the thoughts. Um, I gave, I, I, I gave, like, I think it was most disappointing, or somewhere else anyway, and it's just, yeah, I, I'm not sure, maybe platforming works in the, the Battle Royale genre, but I just don't think that OG Mario specifically works, just because of, again, the, the platforming after 30, 35 years is, is just, it's a little bit clunky, it's a little bit floaty, um, and it's just, it, frustration bores its head more than often and it's not due to like game design or good game design uh more just you know the how long it's been since that game came out and how far we've progressed since then in terms of uh platforming so you know it has its moments but um it you know compared to like tetris 99 it, it's just not even close yeah. It's one of those, it's on here by default because it was a multiplayer game we played Because I year. played a multiplayer game in 2020. Yeah. Which yeah. in and of itself is award worthy that you played a couple of multiplayer games this year, but, you know. I guess I could also technically nominate the new Jackbox game because I did play that for an evening. Yeah. But, yeah. I love me some Jackbox, but since all you boys moved out and uh, with the pandemic and all, I haven't been rushing to buy the big party games anymore. Yeah. 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 Um, it's such a shame. And that's probably part of why this game is, so, this uh, category has suffered so much is because a lot of the games we used to nominate were local multiplayer games, which we're not doing this year. Um, Mark, you were up next to the plate here. Um, I mean... I you know what, if I had played this game, and if I had spent time with it, and, and taken in a lot of the the features and the interactions of it, I probably would have Animal Crossings quite high up, but the simple fact is I just, I haven't played it, um, and it, like, it's, it's probably the biggest game of the year that I should have spent some time with, because, you know, it is massive, I, I think in some ways it's probably maybe even like, I don't know if underrated is the term to use, but just understated on how big New Horizons has been this year and continues to be. Um, so, like, I feel like there is probably a case that you could make to fight against picking it, but I just don't know if any of anyone here has the 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 experience and the chops to go for it. I mean, I I, I think I nominated this. I if for my first Animal Crossing game, I really really loved it, and even. I think relative to a lot of the diehards, um, I bounced off fairly early. I mean, I put I put 40 hours in, but the first timed event around Easter kind of caused me to, to dip. But nonetheless, I mean, I thought it was a, a really cool game. And it really was. I mean, there's a lot of games that are going to be talked about in, in hindsight for 2020 uh, about being games that people hunkered down with at the beginning of the pandemic. But I don't think there's any better than this one because it, it came out basically as the entire uh, world was locking down. And also it's just the the 
people took a lot of solace in the uh, day-to-day um, task-based nature of it, as well as the um, the feel-good vibes. And I think a huge part of that was the multiplayer. And again, it's something I, I didn't expect to enjoy an Animal Crossing game, and I didn't expect to engage with the multiplayer. But it was nice to just, you know, after seeing people post pictures of their island, to then, like, go to it and see what they're doing and see the way they have their character and who's on this island, who's on that island. Also, there's that communal thing of, oh, I have this here if you want to come and get it and trade me this for that. This guy has this custom design. I thought it was it was a, a, genu- a genuinely heartening time uh, to be playing games because I feel like everyone just squirreled away and um, took uh, took some relief from being in this much much cheerier social space than we've basically had access to all year. I I, I would probably cut something else before I would cut. Uh, yeah, and it also had that crossover appeal where you had it kind of like not only because of the timing of it, uh, but because you had people hop on board. Like I I know. I think didn't the Biden Harris campaign use it as a promotional thing at some point? There was like come visit Papa Joe's Island. Uh, at, at some point, I I feel like was a thing. Um, and of that course, that sounds creepy to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. Of it course, uh, Gary Witta uh ran his um Animal Crossing talk show <laughs> that was happening. Oh, yeah. Animal Talking was it or something like that was called. Which was like doing really big numbers online and had people like Brie Larson and, and and that come on. So yeah, it was it was the real zeitgeist game of the the first half of the the pandemic, and I probably even though I've only played it for a few minutes, I know um my partner Emma was like absolutely bet into it for a couple of months until as you kind of do with all these games um like Animal Crossing, you just burn yourself out eventually because you, mm. you kind of done everything or ticked all the boxes or it's just not doing the same thing for you but i think it was like the right game at the right time to give people some sort of structure and some little busy work to do um i think you know of games i love uh like that like if if a wilmot's warehouse or a a stardew valley or something had come out around the same time as well like it would have gone massive in as much as the kind of just that relaxing simple task completion element of it as well um but yeah i'd 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 back barry on this that i i wouldn't it's not my winner but i i i think it should be quite high so like Uh, yeah mark i mean i I, because i feel like we'll vote before we'll get to my pick because i'm at the end here i will say i that did no one else played population one did they no um i mean that's a vr thing so it could only be me and mark and mark i don't think you did um, I never got around to it. In fairness, like, because I'm I'm fine for for Animal Crossing to stay on because I you know I did read up a bunch about it and other people that I know that have played it really bat for it. So I'm fine to keep it on. And then I want to go for a protest vote and just purely go for Warzone just on the basis of their <laughs> patch update file sizes. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna throw that one out there. Uh, as an expert in both Warzone and file sizes thereof, Barry, uh, how do you feel about that replacement? Oh God, because um, those no. th- those are my top two. Yeah, I I would I I as I say this, I don't know which one I'll be going for. I think those are both. Uh, I think uh, War, like I said, I I I love um, Horizon, New Horizons as the the um the the gem buried under the amount of shit that is this year i think but i think call of duty warzone is the actual best proper game to play on this list uh so those are my top two um that's why I, that's why i was happy to throw one of my babies on the fire with, with population one because that is a nice little game that i nominated in this very light category where there was not a lot of competition but it's realistically not you know it's not gonna win yeah I, I i can't i can't in good faith say goodbye to warzone either absolutely not having warzone come off <laughs> and it's like and it's like the file size thing sucks it fucking sucks my 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 wonderful better half got me the new call of duty uh for christmas thank you very much looking Ooh. forward to diving into that fucking 150 gigs just for like <laughs> with, with like w- without the and and a fiver upgrade tax to the ps5 what the fuck like I, oh anyway 
So listen, I have my grievances with Activision, but they got it in that category. They got they got a, a pasting and a talking to. But when if we're if we're getting down to brass tacks on the on the quality of the game, I I, I can't. I Warzone just it can't it can't go. Warzone rules, man. Yeah. Like it 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 actually made me a battle royale fan, which I previously, as as I was mentioned on last year's show, was not. It added enough like interesting elements to battle royales combined with like the original insanely snackable play uh, ability of a call of duty multiplayer that it just got that blend completely perfect and uh yeah there was a good like everyone you know barry you talk about how your um you know animal crossing became your kind of start of the pandemic gaming My, mine was was warzone i was just playing through every day lunch breaks like had my little crew of guys that I was playing with, shout out Biggs and Stu as the main ones, and I just had an absolute blast for a couple of months. I, I, I burnt out on it very quickly, just mainly due to my lack of ability, really, when it comes to first-person shooters and just general, like, I, I don't think I can do this anymore uh, <laughs> element to, to playing the game, but, you know, it was so much fun. There were so many moments, like, literally every game it felt like had a moment where you were either laughing or holding your like head in your hands or, or something crazy would happen uh you just see like every day there was like a there were like multiple youtube accounts like putting up just silly moments or like epic moments from the game and they just yeah that 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 start of that pandemic it kind of felt like the whole world was playing warzone and animal crossing so yeah, oh, I really don't want to see it go off. Yeah, I really don't. When you talk about like the highlights as well, it's like this is something I kind of noticed with with Blackout, um, which was the previous Call of Duty uh, Battle Royale, which was not as good or polished or progressive as this one is. This one does more to move the genre forward than that one did. But that, sure. but the, the thing that the both of them have in common is like I'm constantly surprised at how um fluid uh, a call of duty game can be and i love i love straight multiplayer in, in call of duty but the battle royale the the, the the stuff that can happen in the game is just so kind of uh, uh not what you would have expected from call of duty a couple of years ago when you think of it's just you know online shooting corridors small maps quick respawning you know and 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 this game is just so so something else um uh, it's vast the map the map was vast um but you start to learn your little like the areas of it and it, it felt like what say like maybe 10 traditional call of duty maps all stitched together with like transitional areas and stuff and and, it, and like you say it was seamless like it was so smooth you weren't like juddering around i mean they had their share of glitches that like but I can't remember too many games where I had any issues or slow down or whatever and I was playing it on a base PS4 and it was always really good and yeah I just you like developing your tactics and 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 figuring out like where to go and like where the best hiding places were in certain types of buildings and stuff like that was was really really fun and just genuinely one of those games that you you could pick up and play one round of it and have done with it and be happy or you could sit there for like five six hours and even though like by the end of it you 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 sort of gone mad where you're just doing really stupid stuff to just make each other laugh it it's still as valuable as it is and, and when you win it barry the feeling of oh. winning warzone is just like oh i remember the first time i won it and i was just like running around my room and i won actually a game of warzone this year with Mark, um, so I'm surprised that he's taking a <laughs> shot at it right his, now. His his heart is stone. It's stone. I just I don't know. Like I I just don't really have the patience for battle royales. Hey, dude, um, we worked as a team, you know. Like we 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 held yeah, held but those we rocks. Won because we sat there for half an hour while the last people on the map we were against just randomly died. Hey, we held those rocks, man. We we held those rocks in the like the top, it was one of those ones Barry where it closes on the top corner of a map yeah and you know we we're kind of on a hill behind some rocks um, we took out a team and then we were waiting for the next team and they were trying to make their way there yeah. and obviously the uh, the gas got to them before we could so right. me and Mark just held onto our rocks and won a, uh, won the game of Warzone and that was the last game Mark played this year uh, of Warzone and he won it so you know there's not many people who played like three games of Warzone and won one this year Mark so you know I thought that would at least put a smile on your face uh, did you want to Barry give it the send off explain briefly what 
what caught your eye about Population One? Yeah, so, so it's it's. I mean, it is literally kind of just a case of being first past the post in terms of making a a battle royale game that is on the Quest, which is the standalone VR headset. I know there's been various experimentations and some successes and failures with battle royale in VR already. This is the first one that. Well, first of all, it's the. It's, I think it's the only one on Quest, but also kind of outside of that context, it got some notoriety. I say, you know, this is very solid. Um, and I think it's it's an interesting contrast to uh, to Warzone, where with stuff like the Gulag and people being the flight master and being able to drop loadouts, that feels like it pushes battle royale into a new era, similar to Apex Legends. Uh, Population One, it is just a battle royale. You drop in, you gather guns, you shoot each other. The last person wins. There's a circle. Stay in it. That it's that's it. Its thing is just VR. That's it. It's on VR. And that's cool because it, it does feel very good. It's 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 satisfying. Uh, it's di- skydiving into the level is awesome. Um, one kind of unique thing it does have is you can Spider-Man your way up any surface. You can climb literally anything. So there's no more of this, I'll try and land on a roof when I'm diving in so that I can snipe. It's like, no, you can climb anything. That's genuinely really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's... It doesn't have a great look. It, I'm not saying it is, but it, it has a certain acid flip kind of look about it where all your character models are just generic dudes. You level up and you, or you, you know, you get a, a ho-hum skin or a ho-hum gun with flames on it. You know, it's not, it's not really impressive in the VR realm in any other way beyond just being a VR game, but it is well made and, and, and solid and for, for relatively humble, um, tech in the quest one which is what i was playing it on um it it runs pretty damn well and it, it gets the job done um and so thumbs up to them for that i i don't think it hangs uh with these heavy hitters especially when there's another uh beefy uh, uh king from the battle royale genre uh, in this same category so godspeed to them i will keep playing that game whenever i need a a, a vr fix but uh, not not a winner here so we're down to three um, they're the three biggies, I think. Uh, COD War Zone, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and the one game we haven't talked about in this category yet. Fall Guys! Um, I, I think we're going to come down to a vote, because that's usually what we do when we get down to three. But uh, before that, uh, who wants to chat a bit about Fall Guys? Because uh, I think this was pretty much universally nominated here on the panel, if I remember rightly. Uh, I can go first. It's... it's um... It's great. I mean, it's 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 um, it's kind of a battle royale game as well, which is funny. You know, that is the that is the trend. But more importantly, it 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 grabbed everyone's attention when it first came out with that trailer, where it was like we made a Takeshi's Castle video game, basically. Um, um, and it's you know it's got a very cool sense of style. I do love that it is not just you know basic crappy uh 3d models of humans uh, badly animating obstacle courses you know what i mean they went they went in a different direction and gave it a, a kind of zanier coat of paint that i think added to its charm as well um i i think people like you know same with like gang beasts i think people just like watching weird little anthropomorphic figures bop off each other and fall all over the place um and just i love all the skins you can unlock you can all the goofy outfits it's it's really great um I, I, I fell off it, I, no pun intended, fairly quick, um, uh, just because I think, I think I would love it if there was a bit more depth to the controls, and I realise it's not that kind of game, it's the kind of game where you, you're, you're kind of supposed to play it, and you're, you're fumbling around with the controller, and the physics go crazy, and you lose, and it doesn't really matter why, that's the kind of game, but I think that's also why I kind of had my few weeks with it, and then I was kind of done. But it is a, a tremendous effort. And it was obviously just this massive runaway success. And you can't help but feel good about a game like that, that that comes from relatively nowhere. And simply by having a good premise that looks good in a trailer and more or less then delivers when it comes out, you can blow up overnight and be the biggest game in the world. And that's that's very reassuring. Um, so, yeah, big, big respect to it. it. In some ways, it's like it's this generation and maybe generation is not the right term but it's like this generation's rocket league in being smart enough about its entry price point but also the 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 obvious um parallel to um uh, ps plus 
like between those things and between the very smart strategy about getting the game out to influencers and obviously it's a game that is completely made for streaming and content creation it's those that type of game you can play over and over again you have your moments like i had my moments even with the few streams that i did of it um you know you can have all these just kind of wacky like just kind of bite-sized pieces of like hey look at this thing that happened you know it's a game that is so tailored to that but the good thing the really good thing is it's it, the game doesn't rest on the laurels of just trying to be that it does have you know uh, a very diverse uh bunch of levels which they've been expanding on uh, obviously you know one of the big things we can talk about is the fact that they've been continuously adding content and seasons um and and they haven't you know like taken the foot off the pedal with that kind of stuff they didn't really have a choice early on obviously due to the server issues and the the cheating issues but pretty much all of that has died down now and just doesn't seem to be an issue at all which is excellent so uh, you know I, it really is a, a runaway success in a number of areas i do agree to some degree and uh, you know even spoke uh, when Jeff was on the show about it, uh, you know, I have some issues with the way the controller handles sometimes, with the the general degree of like how um, the team modes work. But you know, they've taken steps towards that as well. So I do think that you know, like over the the long, over the past sort of six months since the game released, it's it, it had a few bumps in the road, and it I think it has found its footing. I haven't gone back to it that often. Um, you know, I I don't think. The game is obviously based on replayability. I don't know if the game has that much replayability in the grand scheme of things, but I would be lying if I didn't say I had a tremendous amount of fun. Um, mainly because it's a battle royale that doesn't follow the, the traditional conventions of a battle royale. And it's, you know, um, Takashi's Castle, but with battle royale mechanics, and I fucking love Takashi's Castle, so, yeah. Yeah, it's it's Takeshi's Castle, it's WarioWare, it's Mario Party, it's, it's all of those you know elements of those games that you know i mean whether some people enjoy mario party or not i am a sadist so i absolutely do so that's that's my cards on the table there but all of those kind of quick you know transition all right we're going to another thing and then another thing and you you know you might be really just not great at one type of of, of discipline in the game and then it's like a shake up of the map and then you, you might get your next one that you're really good at and i kind of as I said at the time, I don't mind the jank in the controls. I think it adds to the experience. I think it has that sort of, you know, the beans sort of wobble and fall over and everything's a little bit off kilter. And that kind of adds to the charm of the game almost is that you you are in control of it, but you're not really super in control of things. Um, uh, and yeah, you just kind of have to accept that very early on. And, and every... It's impossible not to have a smile on your face. I think every round that you play, something funny will happen or something, you know, silly that will just, you know, really per like perk things up in, in the way that the game is being played. And I, I, it, I love how quick it is. Like once you lose or whatever and you're out, bang, it's, it's straight in that back, back to another game. And the way that the maps load in between games and stuff as well has that sort of quick snap WarioWare type thing of not letting you rest on the laurels of a victory in a, in a previous round. And yeah, the whole thing is, is just delivered with such uh, like a joy and like a massive just it's it's what a good video game should be really in 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 the old school sense of like it it's a little bit silly but it it's you want to keep playing it if you see someone playing it like on the stream which is like mark said what made it so successful getting it out to streamers if you see someone playing it you think fuck this looks so much fun i want to play it it's one of those things and if you show someone else the game and they don't even have that much of grasp of like how to play video games or whatever. I, I, I feel like I could give this game, you know, like I say like at work, I've got a really serious work environment. But if I set up like 15, 20 PlayStations and I was like, right, everybody, you know, we're going to play this game. This is like, you know, we do these social things every couple of months. Obviously not so much this year, but this is what we're going to do. We're all going to play Fall Guys together. I genuinely think everyone f from any like age, from like the youngest, like it, like interny graddy type people at like 18 to 21, all the way through to the people who are in their 60s would be able to enjoy this game equally because you just get it you see it and you get it and i think that's such a rare thing in video games to be able to understand the premise of something instantaneously it makes it so appealing 
yeah, it certainly has that like Wii Sports quality. Yeah. Um, for doing that, and I think for me, like you know, we've kind of trodden over all the unique aspects of it at this stage but uh for me what it is is that it captures the soul of what i want from really good multiplayer and that is at its core it's fun um it's it's so much fun it's so user-friendly it's something that i want to play it's something that i want to make people play it's something that i want to watch my friends play it's something that i I would be quite happy to watch strangers play um and you know my kind of i will always eventually bounce off every multiplayer game because I'm a hermit. That's what I do. I I don't play multiplayer games, but I stuck with this particular online multiplayer game a lot longer than I usually do, and I will probably go back to it. It'll be in that rarefied air for me, like things like Splatoon, where I will just dip back in and out when uh, new stuff comes to it, um, and I won't be uninstalling it from my console um so yeah i'm I'm a huge fan of fall guys and you know of this whole list it's the only multiplayer game that i really that popped for me and, and made me want to get involved um this year um right we'll we'll put it to a vote anyway um and i'm first so i'll go fall guys mark i uh yeah i will also go fall guys jack Hmm. See, this is difficult for me because um, I love Fall Guys. Uh, I really do. But I think I'm going to go Warzone, um, which I'm surprising myself saying it now, but just thinking about the time that I spent with it, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to go Warzone. I, I really... It, it, so, like, I knew that I liked that sort of Takeshi's Castle Mario Party wackiness in a game, Whereas I didn't ever yeah. think, ever think like a standard shooter style battle royal would win me over. I was just like, nah, that ain't for me. And Warzone really did it. And yeah, initially at the start of the uh, of of the pandemic, it was it was really good. I think for my for my mental health to have something like that <laughs> to go back to every day with a bunch of people that you know I can't see, so I can hear on a voice chat and stuff like that. So. Warzone takes it just for the for the experience, I think, and yeah. Okay, Barry. Yeah, I'm I'm afraid I am gonna have to split the vote here and go with Warzone as well. Um, I don't think I can surmise it uh, better than 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 Jack did. I do actually think that's maybe a little underrated talking point is that I I do think of um, uh, Animal Crossing as the big social game of the year, but also like it was great to to buddy up with my pals in in Warzone as well and it's it's kind of one of those things that pre-pandemic you just never really made time to do oh yeah make sure you go on Warzone tonight yeah yeah I will you know or go on Call of Duty or whatever and sometimes you do sometimes you don't but both Warzone and Fall Guys this year were both great kind of social uh, uh, games where people kind of made time to go on and it was great to chat to my pals while we were watching the the insanity happen but uh my, my pick of this very uh, tough final three would have to be Call of Duty. Okay, so we are tied, which means it's going to take us to the tiebreaker poll. And I can reveal the results now where there has been somewhat of a landslide. Um, winning multiplayer game of the year with an astonishing 48.3% of the vote wow. is Fall Guys. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of knew if if this one went to yeah. <laughs> went to a fan vote, I didn't. I did not expect um, uh, Fall Guys to be defeated. I here. think Fall Guys is is a deserved winner. I really do. Yeah, no, it is very yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, it's it's fantastic, and yeah, I wonder if it has that longevity that Rocket League has, where it's like I remember. Well, I mean, early, even earlier this year, Mark, me and you were up until like one o'clock in the morning playing Rocket League. Um, still, still a really good game. So I, I hope kind of Fall Guys has that thing of people still going back to it and stuff in the long run. And uh, yeah, I'm sure Activision wouldn't be too pissed off about losing <laughs> losing a boat. They've had enough accolades and ridiculous boatloads of cash, so they'll be on, fine. On second place, tied both with twenty point seven percent of the vote are. Uh, Call of Duty Warzone and Animal Crossing and then Super Mario 35 brings up the rear with 10.3%. No vote for Population 1. Uh, no. Sadly not. My VR boys um, did not back me up. I was going to say, I feel like that says a lot more about the general state of VR 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Is yeah. VR going to happen? Sure. Is it going to be like 3D or, or, or do we think it's here to stay? Interesting one. I, I, I think it'll occupy like the exact space it's in now for the foreseeable future, which is uh, enough people do it to sustain it, but absolutely not going to to uh, overtake anybody else. 